Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm uh, going to do something a little bit differently this week. Um, I've had a string of a few uh, cooking and um, food videos, so I wanted to get back and just to break it up a little bit, do a technology video, because uh, it's one of the, those are two of the four things that I base this channel on primarily. And I have a project that I'm working on now that I've, you know, come up to a point where I think the I don't know, the design or the mock-up, uh, research and development, you know, whatever you want to call it, has reached a point where it would make an interesting video to show you guys. So what I've done is I've assembled I my three-dimensional mock-up. I built a 3D model of this um, treadmill, and I also accumulated a bunch of images of um, some of the inspiration for it. And I don't know how much of that I'm going to get into because the first two times I tried recording this video, it ran 40 minutes long. So I don't want to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, explain first what an omnidirectional treadmill is. Then I'm going to show you my three-dimensional mock-up, how it moves. And then I'm going to show a couple of the major design ideas, why you know where I took inspiration from, um, you know, why I did certain things. And again, I'm going to keep the video as short as possible because I can talk about this stuff all day, but you probably don't want to hear about it all day. And, you know, you can probably hear it from more informed locations. But uh, so this is probably the most high profile uh, here on the screen. This is probably the most high profile version of an omnidirectional treadmill that most people are aware of. Um, it's a scene from the movie Ready Player One. And essentially what a omnidirectional treadmill is, um, it's a treadmill that you can walk or run in any direction. Um, you don't have to, a regular treadmill, you can run straight forward. And, but you, if you try to turn, you're going to have a bad time. An omnidirectional treadmill, you can run forward, you can run side to side. And I'm actually going to play some scenes from that movie, very brief scenes, just to, edu just to, to uh, give a sense of what I'm talking about. The first scene is this treadmill here in this image. Um, it's a very kind of fictionalized version of it because while this treadmill does exist and it is a real product, it doesn't work anywhere near this fast. Um, it's more of a walking design at this point. So they kind of sped it up in post-production in this, in this clip from this uh, movie. They put a little movie magic on it, but uh, it works the same way as it looks in the movie but just much slower. So just keep that in mind when he turns and it looks a little weird, like his body weight wouldn't have shifted that way. That's why, is because they did kind of fudge it a little bit. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play that just to start off so you can get a sense of what it's possible. My design does not have a moving treadmill. My design has more of a dish su surface where your feet slide and your body is held in position by a scaffolding, so to speak. But it sounds really messed up, but I'll show you exactly what I mean, and it's not nearly as bad. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and play this. And again, he's clipping this belt on because that's what hooks him to, holds him in place. And these are his haptic gloves so that he can touch stuff and have tactile field feedback. You can see the treadmill starts moving forward. And then in a second here, he turns and see how the treadmill will turn and change in that direction too. So... That's the, in a sense, that's the, the definition of an omnidirectional treadmill. Now, these smaller ones that the Sixers use in this movie, the, the bad guys, so to speak, this is more of a design similar to what mine is going for. Um, I'd have to invent a lot of technology to make the other one work, and somebody is already way ahead of me, so I just want to build something that I can build, that I have the technology for. And you can see this, the bottom dish doesn't move. It's just slippery when they use their shoes on it. They have special shoes, so that's the whole point of it, is your feet slip, but your body's held up anyways. Um, so that that much more closely matches what I'm building. And you can see it, it's kind of, it, you can't really see it, her feet moving, but you can see the dish underneath them. So that's that video. And this is more... This is similar to what I'm building. This has a lot of limitations. And a lot of them are obviously you can't duck or, you know, jump. Um, and my version's much similar to these Cat VR versions. 
where you can walk on it and your feet slide because there's something holding you in place. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump to mine before I put a ton of time into this. And this is my treadmill. Um, again, it doesn't look like the one from Ready Player One with the moving treadmill parts uh, because it doesn't move. This is simply a, it's going to be a, either fiberglass or um, laminated dish, essentially. It doesn't show that it's a dish so much from there. I can change it to a different view and it will be more visible. But it always has to re-render. So we're going to go with a pre-visualization. <laughs> um, essentially, when I was referring to the part, it basically a, an omnidirectional treadmill does several things. The first thing is, is it, it locks down a specific axis of movement, meaning a direction. Um, you know, you can move in, a normal hum, human moves in multiple axes and, you know, different directions and angles at the same time. But the treadmill is designed to eliminate one, and that is forward and back. Um, everything else is accounted for, and it allows you to move in those directions. But and, and that's actually much more difficult than it sounds. Trust me, while I was building this, and I understand why some of the um, previous designs were made the way they were. And uh, I'm hoping that my design is an improvement on some of them. And some of them are just, I'm sure, I'm not saying that I'm smarter than them because obviously if they didn't have to make these treadmills, you know, able to be disassembled and then shipped in lightweight and able to be reassembled at home by people with hand tools, then they could probably make a much more sturdy and, uh, and much better treadmill. But they have different design challenges than I do. I don't have to ship mine. I don't have to explain to somebody else how to build it. I just have to make it and make it work and be able to fit it through the door ideally. But because um, I live on the third floor and it's not going to be fun to carry it back down if it doesn't go. So, but this is the um, general idea of it. And I'm sure it looks incredibly strange. Maybe like something out of Alien or Slender Man or something like that. But um, it all serves a purpose. And as I said before, this is the the dish at the base. The red part is the with my logo is the part that your feet slide on. Um, obviously, I'm gonna have some form of specialized shoes, and I'm I'm expecting a little bit of, you know, trial and error with that. But uh, as you can see, there's a wooden uh, platform underneath. There's some artifacting errors because I didn't I did this very quickly the other night and changed it. Um, this here, let me move that back and move that there and then we're going to move this all up so as you can see there are rollers on four corners here each of these rollers have a top and bottom lip and this is obviously a very crude illustration these top and bottom lips are most likely going to be made out of steel either our oversized steel washers and this is a steel plate with a you know a rotation um pin in the center of it that's gonna not that's hooked to that so anyways the uh, that allows this metal ring here to rotate and also be held in between like the the ring runs around like this in the top and bottom keep it from flexing because it's gonna be very tight and the four you know rotational cylinders holding out on the edges will keep it centered so and the uh, obviously the support structure which has the, you know, the part that hooks to you is welded solidly to this ring. So when you turn, that entire structure will rotate as will the ring on the bottom. So you'll have this, uh, as you can see here, I'll zoom in, this plate here that I have circled in yellow now, or orange, is, uh, is going to be riveted to this. This is a mock-up. Trust me, don't. <laughs> This is essentially what uh, I'm going to be using here. This is a climbing harness. I'm going to, you know, remove these metal rings because they're not really suited to my purposes. And then I'm going to rivet this back thick belt here between two plates of aluminum that are bent to shape, you know, roughly around a body. And then that will allow, you know, so when you sit down with it, 
those loops are also going to go around your you know upper thighs and that will hold your weight like you're sitting in a chair and then when you stand up that weight's all going to come back on the belt so that's the idea for it um this is a very very crude model that i put together with some seat belts and images of a life preserver vest so if it doesn't look like the other image that's because i really decided to change this probably a week ago and just you know through a different model together and i didn't want to model that entire thing so just picture the other image in this <laughs> when you look at it so um but anyways that uh aluminum plate there i'm gonna have one there and i'll also have another one you know in here so they're going to be hooked together and there'll be some you know insulating foam on that or something to keep it from uh, chafing your back or whatever but that'll give a really solid foundation for when you turn and rotate it's going to push that movement into the surrounding structure and that will rotate as well and it will keep everything centered again this is all about locking down axis of movement um and you anything that that gets you out of the center of the treadmill like you can move however you want as long as you stay in the center of the treadmill and this is the the primary function of this um, this is the entire, I should say, this is the entire function of this entire support structure here is to keep you in the center. And if I just made a solid design that kept you in the center that you could rotate around, that would be pretty much the same thing as this. And this is a Vertux Omni. This was probably one of the first modern omnidirectional treadmills that are similar in design to this. But I made a few more modifications to increase the, the comfort and the mobility so that, you know, if you try to duck underneath something, you can't duck underneath, you know, if somebody shoots a fireball at your head in virtual reality, you can't duck on that treadmill because the belt has wings that sit on top of that round platform around the waist and you can't duck. So I've accounted for that, the ability to stand up or duck here. And you can see... These are essentially, probably the easiest way to describe them would be um, skateboarding wheels. They're not skateboarding wheels, but they're very similar in the way they look. Um, you can see the bearing in the center. That's a post, then there's the bearing, and then there's a rubber wheel. The rubber wheel is just there for vibration and everything. Uh, uh, absorption, I should say. And uh, this plate here moves up or down the post sticks out through the center between these two like kind of it's kind of like this vertically and the wheel goes in the center with the post and then it slides up or down and you can see it from a different angle better obviously this wheel's going to turn i didn't bother turning it because i figured everybody's you know imagination work at least that much <laughs> so um because i could have spent a lifetime designing this and it never would have been done um, but yeah, and essentially it, those, those posts hook to this plate and behind here, which is what this hinge hooks to your back. And it all looks very complicated, but it's really not. It's just, um, basically it's a plate that's hooked to your back that hooks to the support structure so that you can stand up or down or sit down and it allows for that movement just vertically, just vertically with that one hinge and these two support struts are heavier duty versions of basically, you know, if you've had a, a car and it doesn't have one of the torsion arm things in your trunk lid, if it's got those, or if you've got a minivan in the back window, it's basically just a hydraulic strut that's designed to take weight off of things. So these are probably going to be, I don't know, maybe 55 pound lifts each. So it takes a total of 100 pounds off. Um, and that's just to, again, make it easier to reduce friction when your feet are moving, because if you're a hundred pounds lighter than normal, it's going to be easier for your feet to not, you know, grab. So that's what that does. Essentially, as this moves up or down the, uh, struts there, and it's not going to go any further down than this, because you'll see it hits a plate here at the bottom right here. It doesn't hit that yet, but you get the idea. So it'll go down to about there, and that's where it hits. So if you're going to sit down, that's where the 
where it's going to stop your range of motion there. Um, obviously, your legs are going to be more extended in front of you. And I'll have to build this to the, the right height. My son and I are both the same height, roughly around 5'9", five, 5'10". Five, so that's another design um, issue I didn't have to worry about accounting for. We're, we're the same height. Obviously, we weigh very different amounts, but like the height is the same. So our sitting positions are going to be very similar. You know, they can't do that for like, you know, mass market. And they can't do that for mass market devices. But where this is just for us, and I'm just showing everybody some a project I'm working on, I don't have to worry about that. I don't have to design this for somebody that's 6'5 and somebody that's 5'2. I'm just designing it for us who we're both around 5'9, five, 5'10. Five, so again, our seating positions are going to be, you know, our, our waist is going to be at the same height, roughly sitting down. And, you know, standing up, it's both going to be the same too. Um, again, this moves all the way up to, this is probably going to not be as high as it is in, when I finish it. I'm going to have to see what the difference is in height. It's probably a difference of around two feet. So this entire channel will probably be two feet when I'm done. And again, these these shocks are there to, uh, yeah, I just pulled them out. But um, the shocks are basically there just to lift weight, to keep your, you know, to take a little bit of the, the load off, so to speak, in my case. But, uh, um, and then here again, this is a solid hinge. It's not a, you know, it's not meant to be flexible in a ton of different directions. It's meant to be flexible in tilting side to side. So this here, if you're rotating, you know, you can rotate like you're leaning side to side and it will do that. And you can see here the center pin. This may end up becoming two separate hinges in my final design, but the, the general idea is here. And this here, you're going to be able to lean forward. I mean, this is more up or down. So like if you're bending over this here, you're going to want to probably be upright ish. There. And uh, this here is if you're leaning forward, say like you're kneeling down, you're going to be in this position here, probably. That's like if you're putting your knees down and, you know, picking something up off the ground, you'd be doing that. And then as you lean back up, I mean, as you stand back up, this is going to rotate back up to there. And then you are uh, going to be able to stand up like that and then keep going. And as you keep running, this is going to, the natural motion of you moving in, in a certain direction is going to cause this to spin so that whatever direction you're heading into, like the... Uh, this, uh, this red arrow here, um, I think it's the x-axis. Yeah, the x-axis, but it doesn't really matter in this purpose. Um, whatever direction you're moving into, that's going to naturally pull the rest of the structure in behind you. So it's not something like you have to reach out and move it around. It's going to move that way automatically because it's going to be pulling, if that's at all off-center, as soon as you start moving in a direction, it's going to want to pull that right around so it's right behind you. So... And again, this is, it, like I said, it's all about limiting axes, axis of movement. Um, and they've done, a couple of different companies have done this a diff little differently. I'm just going to pull up the, uh, the Cat VR options. This is their first model, and I don't really like the arm behind it. It just looks like something that's going to fail uh, and break. Uh, but again, the dish at the base is uh, similar, but it's kind of small, I, th I believe. I think it's around 36 inches on their models. Mine's going to be around 48. Um, it's probably somewhere between 36 and 48, but I want it to have plenty of movement so you're not stepping off the edge of it because I think that would break immersion. It would remind you, and when I say break immersion, that means remind you that you're in a video game. You want to remove all of those tells and physical 
you know, physical tells away so that there's nothing there to remind your brain that you're inside a video game. So, you know, again, you never really forget that you're in a video game, but, you know, if you can eliminate more and more of those, you know, things that will pull you out of it and do, again, what we call is break immersion, then, you know, you're going to have a more, you know, a more immersive experience where you feel like you're in the game more than, than, uh, you know, the game world, I should say, than you are in real, real life at that time. This is their upgraded model. Um, and this is, it changes back to the belt function. Uh, and this is, this is similar to the, the way that I have it, mine designed. Uh, this inspired the belt idea, but, um, again, the, the dish that, uh, he's walking on is a little narrow for my taste. Just, and I understand that the, you know, like you see that image of the Vitruvian Man by uh, Leonardo da Vinci. You know how the limbs come out and it's a full circle around the body. And again, that's why like your stride naturally takes that shape. So you can't stretch it out too far because then your foot is just not getting there. But I think if you stretch it out a little bit, it's okay if your foot doesn't make it all the way to the edge. Even if it's like three quarters of the way there, as long as it's still a dish shape, I think it will be fine. And again, I'll have to try it. And if it doesn't work out, then, you know, we'll make changes. But uh, I don't like this structure here where it's only the two poles. Because every time I've seen that in use, that, that tends to flex. And it just looks like a failure point to me. Um, just a spot where it's going to snap, you know. And again, I'm not a 120-pound, you know, dude. It's, you know, if I get moving, it's going to have to hold me back. So... It needs to be rugged enough to do that. And I can do that without having to build something that has to be disassembled. So that's why I'm suggesting that I'm, or I'm saying I'm going to weld it. Uh, this is their newest model. And you can see these vertical slits in, the, in behind. And that allows for standing up and sitting down. So in some ways it's better than the other one. I don't uh, necessarily think that the, the pivot hinge on the bottom it's like a center post and the stuff come the you know the support structure comes off that so it rotates but it's rotating around a spot like that and you're kind of balancing on this platform and it just seems kind of rickety to me but um it, it makes some advancements and maybe the other system their uh their previous one worked in the same way like it rotated around and there's just a post in the center it just doesn't look super sturdy to me so that's why I went away with a different design to one that, uh, you know, was much more solid in the base. Um, and also, I live on the third floor, so I'm trying to... It's not necessarily going to be like solid wood, as in I'm showing here in the base. It's not uh, going to be that. There's going to be layers of sound deadening and things like that incorporated to try to reduce vibrations um, while you're running. And, you know, there's going to be some trial and error with it. And I'm definitely going to make more videos as I get further into the process. Um, I basically just wanted to give everybody kind of an overview. And I've been working on this model for a little while. So uh, I wanted to share that because, you know, I think it it's a kind of a cool design. And I can't wait to use it. I think it's going to be so much fun. Um, especially because I live in Maine. So, you know, yeah, we do get outside and do stuff in the wintertime. Um, but generally we don't go out like running or walking in the middle of the winter so this is a fun way for me to you know get some movement in uh, me and my son both and also you know if you want to go for a run through Skyrim or something that would be you know a, definitely a, a fun way to use this or uh, on No Man's Sky which is what I'll probably end up using the, for the bulk of the time but um, but yeah no I just wanted to show this to you guys and uh, definitely uh, if you like what you're seeing um, go ahead and give this uh, video a like, and uh, if you want to see more of this, uh, either subscribe and or leave a comment down below. Let me know if you have any questions. Um, I put a ton of thought into this, so if there's something that I haven't thought of, or if you find something interesting on it, please let me know, because this is the point where I want to make changes. I don't want to make changes when I'm welding stuff together or getting it, you know, stuff fabricated parts of it. Um, that's, if I'm changing stuff at that point, something's gone wrong. <laughs> so I'd rather, uh, do a measure twice, cut once kind of deal. But, uh, this is definitely something I've been thinking of for a while 
and uh, it's definitely something I want to build and I think will be uh, really cool. So, um, again, thanks for watching and uh, see you next time.